Recently, I heard that the sun contributes one-third to Earth's tides. And I was thinking, is that true? Because I thought the moon did all the heavy lifting. So we're going to be able to prove that using this formula for tidal force. You just take the mass of whatever object you're interested in, divided by its distance cubed. But it's very similar to the force of gravity, mass over distance squared. So what's the difference here? Well, which of these has a greater force of gravity on the Earth? Well, the sun by a long shot, because it's got such a bigger mass. But in terms of the tidal force, you guessed it, you know it, the moon comes out on top because of its closer distance. So that's where distance makes a much bigger difference for tides, but less of a difference for gravity. But let's go ahead and plug into this equation for the sun and the moon here. Starting with the sun, we'll go ahead and put its mass in kilograms up top, divided by its current distance from Earth in meters. And we're gonna cube that since it's in the bottom. And that'll give us this amount. And then same thing for the moon. And that'll give us this amount. But right away we could see, oh yeah, this is a bigger number than this one. So therefore, the moon contributes much more to Earth's tides than the sun does. But how much so? Well, we could add these two forces together here, get a total. And then we could turn these both into percents, just divide by that total. So that'll give us 33% here, 67% here, and there we have it. The sun does contribute one-third to Earth's tides, or 33%. And the moon still does the heavy lifting with two-thirds, or 67%. So it's super cool to see those numbers work out in that balance there. And of course, these will work together when the sun, the moon, and the earth are all lined up in a straight line. So those will be the highest tides. But when the moon's off to the side at a 90 degree angle, still high tides, but less so. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, what else could we use this formula for? Well, the moon used to be at least three times closer. So what was the tidal force like? when the moon was only one-third its current distance away. In other words, three times closer. Well, we could just change that down there to one-third the distance. And then one-third cubed, that'll give us one over 27 in the bottom there. But that's actually the same thing as multiplying the whole equation by 27. So therefore, when the moon was three times closer, the tidal force was 27 times greater. Unbelievable. Reminds me of that water planet in Interstellar. But you could go one step further, because when the moon first formed, it was eight times closer. So then you could do that calculation. So I'll leave that to you. But finally, you might be wondering, well, where did this come from in the first place? Why is it distance cubed in the bottom? Well, it's a great question. It starts with Newton's law of gravity. That'll find the force of gravity between two objects. It just depends on their distance squared. But we could rewrite that because r squared in the bottom, same thing as r to the negative two. But then the tidal force is actually a change in that force of gravity over a change in distance. In other words, the derivative of this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, these are all constants, so you could ignore those and then deriving r to the negative 2, just push the negative 2 in front, put the constants, and then we'll decrease the power by 1, so r to the negative 3. So that's it, because r to the negative 3, same thing as distance cubed in the bottom. So it's a super cool formula. Feel free to mess around with it and let us know what else you discover. And here's another astronomy video if you're interested in that. Let me know what questions you run into, what else you discover, and we'll see you in the next video. Toodles!